What's up friends? So I make a lot of explainer videos and I've explained Intel processor classes, same thing for AMD, and I explained what processor generations are. I'll leave links to all of those below in case you're interested. But for this video, I'm answering a question that's been asked a lot lately, which is can you simplify Nvidia graphic cards and which one is ultimately right for me? Absolutely I can. These videos are difficult to make because that's a lot of information to condense, but hopefully I can do the same that I do with my other videos. Now there's always going to be that one smug guy in the comment section like, eh, you don't include all the details. Well, of course, this is a simplified video. We're not going to include all the technical details. After all, the purpose is to help simplify things, not confuse you. So if you are already technically initiated, you know where the exit button is. You might as well find a more initiated video like you would find on something like Gamer Nexus's channel, for example. Nonetheless, though, of course, for the rest of you, hopefully you'll have a real good idea of which graphic card is right for you by the time we're done this video. So let's get into it. A couple of quick caveats for this video. Firstly, we're only covering desktop class processors, so I'm not going to cover laptop class graphic cards. Those are entirely separate despite sharing the same names. We can make a video on those later on if you're interested. Secondly, I'm only going to cover 40 series generation cards because that's the current generation at the time of this video, but this video will still help you with future generations in the way that I'm actually going to tear the video as you'll see. Additionally, it's worth noting this is not a benchmark or technical video. It is designed to give you a simplified explanation which I've already mentioned mentioned a bunch of times. However, we will have to keep some technicality to help you understand basic concepts. So the two technical specifications we will constantly refer to is first the CUDA cores, which is literally the number of physical processing cores we have on any given graphics card, and video memory, which is the total memory available on a graphic card. These two things combined determine what resolution is ideal for that graphic card and what frames you can expect. FPS and resolution are the two most common attributes gamers look for when determining which graphic card is right for them. So those are the ones we're going to stick to for this video. Starting with the cheapest card you can get, the RTX 40 series. This basically has two variants. There's the base RTX 4060 card, and then there's the more powerful RTX 4060 Ti card, which stands for titanium, by the way. It's just a more enhanced version of the base card. Now you'll have anywhere between 3,072 CUDA cores to as many as 4,352 CUDA cores with the more powerful Ti card. And you'll have between eight to 16 gigabytes of video memory. This card is ideal for anyone who wants to game at full HD or 1080p resolution and wants to hit or exceed 60 frames per second with most modern day titles at maximum settings. What makes this card impressive is that it's capable of ray tracing so you can have advanced lighting effects and still achieve a very high frame rates at the suggested resolution. Now the biggest downside with this card is that it doesn't have a lot of horsepower when you compare some of the other ones which means you're primarily going to be stuck at 1080p, you could go higher resolution, but you'll notice dramatic drops in frame rate and certain games with ray tracing on will also see dramatic drops in frame rate, but it's a stable card if you're just looking for full HD gaming with the ability to max out most game settings. With a starting retail price of about 300 US dollars, it may be tempting to get a RTX 4060, but for a lot of consumers, I wouldn't recommend it. The fact is resolution are only going to get higher. You're going to maybe run into a better monitor down the road, or you might upgrade other components and the RTX 4060 just won't be that future proofy, if that's a word. I would recommend trying to save a little bit of money and get a more higher tier card like the ones I'm going to talk about next. Next up, we come to arguably the most popular RTX graphic card series, the 4070 series. So in fact, this card series is so popular that you have a total of four distinct models. The first two are the RTX 4070 and the one year newer RTX 4070 Super, which just came out recently at the time of this video. So the CUDA core count rate ranges between 5,888 cores to 7,168 cores for the newer Super variant, though both of them do share the same VRAM of 12 gigabytes. This card is often regarded as the perfect mid-range card because of its capability to play most modern day games at maximum settings at the 2K or 1440p resolution while hitting anywhere between 60 to high 100 FPS range, which is pretty impressive and especially considering when you often have ray tracing on, this card is super optimized and can handle high frame rates despite that setting being turned on for most games. Now what I like about this card is that while it does have a starting price of $600, nearly twice as expensive as the RTX 4060, it does provide more long-term value as even when the card gets older, you'll still be able to use it to play games at full HD setting with maximum settings. So you just downscale resolution, but you can still keep this card for longer. Thereby, it is one of my favorite cards in the market right now. On the upper side of the 4070 cards, you basically have the 4070 
Ti and the 4070 Super Ti. The respective core counts are at 7,860 CUDA cores for the standard Ti and for the Super Ti you have 8,448 CUDA core counts. These counts are pretty high. Additionally, you get between 12 to 16 gigabytes of video memory depending on which of the two cards you get. Now, this card is also optimized for 2K gaming, but it's for truly uncompromised 1440p gaming. While the 4070 can handle most things at max setting, the 4070 Ti series will give you the confidence of handling everything maxed out with really high frame rates. So if you are ray tracing on, you'll get well north of 60 frames per second on most modern day games. And in some rare cases, you can even exceed 200 frames per second on older titles or more optimized titles at that resolution, which means if you have a high refresh rate monitor, you'll have the confidence of knowing that you'll hit those desired frame rates every single time. The 4070 Ti series starts at $750, which is critically more expensive than the base $600 starting price of the 4070 series. However, there is enough of a performance gap for there to be a substantial justification for the price. Despite that though, if your intention is just to game at 1440p with maximum settings at reasonable frame rates, for more most people the base 4070 series of cards might be enough. Today's video is in partnership with the Hanser. If you've ever wondered how I get that cinematic looking b-roll effect on all my footage or how other YouTubers do it, well the circuit is often a good plugin. The Hanser Pro for Final Cut Pro is my go-to tool. It's an all-in-one station that has everything you could possibly need. So whether you're using various film profiles or you want to get a certain look, it's all built in there. If you're shooting in log, like for example I use S-Log in my A7 IV, you have custom profiles that are tailored for it. You even have a bunch of other cool color effects that allow you to tweak the overall look of your footage and you have a lot of cool effects that I use all the time. For example, if you want a more grainy look with your film, you have the option of that as well. And you have 63 distinct film profiles, which means you can bring various prints and looks depending on what suits your need. You also have other cool effects like halation, which brings that cool red tint on all your b-rolls. I use it all the time. And if you want your lighting to pop out a little bit more, you can add bloom effects as well, which kind of just really brings a lot of life to the background lighting and gives that cinematic look again. And then you have other cool features like gate weave as well as the ability to bring film breath for those subtle but ultimately noticeable effects on a footage. All this and more really brings your b-rolls and all your footage like in my videos to life and it's a game changer and it's all super easy to use thanks to the clean interface they have built in within Final Cut Pro. If you are looking for it, the Enhancer has a lot of distinct options, you can buy the Pro package, which gives you two licenses, I believe, with a single purchase, or you can actually buy individual effects separately as well. There's a ton of options, so check out their website. I also have a discount code in the video description below in case you're interested. So again, really check it out if you want to take your video editing game to the next level. Next, we come to the big leagues, the RTX 40 series of cards. At the time of this video, there's basically two versions, the base RTX 4080 and the one-year newer RTX 4080 Super. Core counts at 9,728 for the base version, with the Super at 10,000. 240 CUDA cores. Both of them do share the same VRAM of 16 gigabytes. What makes this card so special is that it's a true 4K gaming video card. It allows you to play the most modern day and demanding video game titles at that resolution with frame rates well north of 60 FPS. In fact, with some games you can even hit frame rates over 100 FPS on modern day titles. And the best part is you can keep ray tracing enabled, which is advanced lighting techniques like I mentioned, at the same time without making too much of a compromise on overall frame rates. This is a very powerful set of GPUs that are designed for true 4K gaming. The only downside is that they are extremely expensive, even with the recent price cuts you can expect to pay at least $8,000 for these cards. And the fact is that unless you are doing gaming at 4K, the 4070 might be more than enough for most people. In fact, you need some serious prerequisites to take advantage of this card. Firstly, you want to make sure you have a 4K gaming monitor and one that can support higher refresh rates. If you don't have those, you're going to be pretty much pindled down to like 1440p gaming, which means you won't be able to make the most of this card. The only other reason you may want to consider it, of course, is longevity. So the best part of the 4080 series is that even five years from now, it can probably handle most modern day titles at at least 2K resolution 
resolution with most settings maxed out, which again means there's a lot of future-proof value over here. Every hierarchy must have something at the top. In Nvidia's world, that's the RTX 4090. At the time of this video, it is by far the most powerful GPU on the consumer market. That will probably change if you're watching this video much later on, but let me break it down. With a colossal CUDA core count of 16,384 and a colossal 24 gigabytes of video memory, this card sits at the top. It is designed for unconditional 4K gaming. It is designed to max every bit of setting with ray tracing on and whatever else you can throw at and give you close to triple digit frame rates with most games and in some cases even exceed that number. It is truly designed to make sure that you never have to worry about things like low frame rates or choppy performance. Even the most demanding of titles will consistently run above 60 frames per second. This is a card only for those who dare to go at that extreme level of enthusiasm. For most of you this card is an absolute waste of money. Make no mistake, it's extremely absurd price of $1,600 is just crazy and good luck finding at that price is often way more expensive than that this card is again an enthusiast level card it can even handle 8k gaming technically speaking albeit at much lower frame rates barely hitting 60 fps but it is capable of doing that it is more of a technical prowess kind of card than an actual practical card but it is a beast in every right of the word with that said though the 4090 saving grace is the fact that it will have the long Longest lasting practical use out of all the cards I talked about. I have no doubt in my mind this is probably the only card that after a 5 year point can still probably run most modern day games at 4K resolution, albeit at lower settings, but still at 4K. Nonetheless though, the 4090 does not need to be considered unless you are either rich you don't have anything else to spend money on, or you are an extreme enthusiast. For most of you, the 4080 or the 4070 should be more than sufficient. That's just my two cents, but I want to tell you what the 4090 is all about anyway, because for any tech nerd like myself, it is an exciting card no matter how you look at it. All right guys, so in summary again, the RTX 4060 is a entry level card ideal for 1080p gaming. The RTX 4070 and the 4070 Ti is the ideal 1440p or 2K gaming card. The 4080 is the best general 4K gaming card with the 4090 being an enthusiast level 4K and above gaming card. Now with that said, of course, I skipped a ton of technical details like I said I would to simplify this video as much as possible. I highly encourage you to watch more technical videos on YouTube or do your own private research so you have a better idea but hopefully now you have a principal foundation of what each of these cards is roughly capable of and you can do further research or maybe even make a purchase decision at this point. If you want to learn more about these cards or about other type of cards like AMD GPUs for example let me know I'd be more than happy to make content on it and as always if you enjoyed the content please consider subscribing these videos are difficult to make and you can show your appreciation by subscribing to this channel and liking this video. Thank you so much for watching.